Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode four of the electric supercharger Camaro project. And uh, I've got some exciting shit for you today. Um, it's getting interesting now. Things are starting to come together. Things are starting to work. Noises are happening. I know last video I thought I'd be done in like a month or so, but that didn't happen because uh, I ran into some unanticipated issues with programming mostly. And there was also a shit ton of wiring. I mean, wiring is a big deal because it's mostly safety uh, that, you're, you know, that you have to make sure you, have, you do it properly. Otherwise, you could like light yourself on fire, and I don't want to do that. Um, so as you can see, I've got all the, uh, the wiring that, that uh, comes from the box, all you know, sort of somewhat cable organized, I guess you could say, and properly grounded to the chassis of the vehicle and uh, you know, sort of out of the way and, and hooked up properly and everything, all the terminal blocks are connected. And I got wire bundles coming out of the control box, going through the firewall and back to the inside of the car, uh, feeding the computer in there so that all the uh, systems can run automatically from the, from the computer. And I've also got some other, you know, cable bundles here and there, plumbing here and there. Uh, hooked up the blow-off valve, had to tee into the vacuum line to provide uh, vacuum for that. That might have to be tuned. I don't know how much pressure it'll hold until I try it out. But um, other than that, yeah, uh, a lot of the underhood stuff looks pretty much the same as it did before. Uh, but like I said, mostly electrical work, high power and signal. So uh, all of this stuff is done, and when we go to the back of the car, you'll see how it's all hooked into the battery pack and everything like that. So here we are in the trunk looking at the uh, finished battery pack. I've got like an ammo box sort of set up and foam insulation to keep the heat uh, from getting to the box. And then I've got like drywall elements in the inner chamber here, directly in contact with the batteries because they don't burn. So they're kind of flame retardant. And I got the two batteries, of course, uh, not because I need two for the voltage, but just for, for more juice, you know, so I can run longer. Um, and the battery connectors, I had to splice into them and, and sort of jury rig them like this so that I could, you know, make a parallel connection here and still have terminals to go out to the car. Um, so that's all done. And uh, this one here goes to the ground, which is just the chassis of the, metal of the car, the sheet metal of the car. It's bolted right to the car. And then this one here goes to the wire bundle that feeds uh, the, the, all the stuff in the, in the front of the car. It goes up to the hood and, and goes right into the, the brushless DC controller for the motor. So uh, this thing can supply, you know, well in excess of 300 amps, although I won't be needing anywhere near that uh, to get full boost. But um, this is what it looks like when it's fully connected and ready to go. This white wire here goes down in between the valley in between the two batteries there and connects to a thermistor. It's got five volts ground and signal wires going back to the computer in the car that just uh, says what the temperature of the battery pack is. So if I see it rising too fast or you know getting too hot, I'll know you know that, that I need to shut it down or whatever. Um, and that's pretty much it. So now let's take a look at the rest. Now inside the car, obviously this is kind of the cool part. So I've got uh, my cable bundle from from various parts of the car including like mostly mostly from the hood of the car where I showed you earlier where all the sensors and everything are, are coming into the car that's mostly from there but also from other parts of the car too like the trunk for the thermistor and stuff like that uh, that big black cable bundle then terminates at this uh, rectangular connector here and this rectangular connector comes in through this bundle here into my control box I didn't use a couple of wires so they're just hanging loose um, and then of course I've got on the back end, I got power, uh, so you know I got like 14 volts car voltage right coming in through here. First, I have to disable the kill switch that uh, cuts the the battery voltage to the front of the car, and that should uh, give me power to the to the uh, to the the BLDC controller for the motor. And then I have to turn the car to accessory mode. You can hear the beeping coming from the uh, from the supercharger, and this. This light illuminates and then I can fire this up and I'm gonna see if I can avoid glare here this is like a boot up sequence <clears throat> helps me diagnose what's wrong with the code all right so now the control panel for the most part is working perfectly fine everything's kind of accurate and and working um i'll just go through the panels just to show you kind of how they, how things are responding even when the car's off you can get some feedback so for example car's off so you're not going to get much you'll notice the map 
sensor is not reading correctly. It jumps around. Every time I turn the car on, I get a different number coming off this thing. So I got to figure out what's wrong with the tuning on that. But it's kind of close-ish. I mean, obviously the car is off, so it's sitting at atmospheric pressure. So it's kind of closer to atmospheric than it is to like, you know, a small number. When I turn the car on, it, it drops down to like 25 uh, kilopascals, which is uh, more what you would what you would expect. You'll notice that the RPMs obviously are zero. TPS, however, if I press the gas pedal even with the car off, you'll see that the TPS actually rises the way you would expect it and goes up to maximum. So that works fine. Let the foot off the pedal there. And then uh, going to stuff like, I don't know, power supply for example, you can see that it's got the voltage, the battery voltage there, 27 volts. Capacity is good. The, ba the, the temperatures are more or less reading correctly. right away that the RPMs are reading correctly. I've got uh, on my tachometer here, I've got looks like about 800 RPM thereabouts. And I've got about that on the RPM gauge here. Manifold pressure is a little off, but you know, it's reading low because the car is pulling vacuum now. So that is at least proportional. So all I got to do is kind of figure out what the, what the tuning issue is there. AFR, I've got about 14 and it's 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 about 14 on this as well and KR is zero as it should be so everything is working pretty good on this screen anyway uh, induction you're not gonna see a whole lot going on here right now because nothing's on on the supercharger side but um, power supply again sort of the same thing as before nothing special going on there and you got all your diagnostics uh, reading correctly so um, yeah, this is this is just sort of like you know, this the state that everything is in when you turn the car on. And now, uh, what I can do is I can show you the supercharger uh, going into um, like spooled condition. So I've got this setting, I've got this setting back here where I can do pre-spooling, which means basically I'm just turning the supercharger on to a very low level just to sort of get it spinning so that there's no lag when I actually hit the gas. I don't want to actually turn this on when the car's on because I have to still do some safety testing to make sure that I'm not going to blow the engine up when I turn this thing on for the first time. So I've been testing it with the car off, uh, but it's still a proof of concept anyway, right? Just to demonstrate that everything's working correctly. So uh, I'm going to turn the car off and hopefully this doesn't screw anything up. Okay, so now the car's off. And if you listen carefully, when I hit the, uh, actually first I have to turn the supercharger subsystem on, so I can show you that. So as soon as I, as soon as I flip the switch, it should ungray the second call, the second row there, and you'll hear the beeping stopped. Um, so it says unspooled, but we're going to change that, and it says zero percent duty. And over here it says supercharger enable one and supercharger duty 1730. That's in microseconds. Uh, for an RC controller, it should be between 1500 and 2000 uh, for forward operation. Although for some reason my supercharger, my controller is set up that it's like neutral at 1730. I don't know why. That's just the way I got it. So I'm working with that. So now if I go back and go to the spooling setting, and pre-spool it, you'll hear the supercharger actually turn on if you listen. Sounds a bit like a hair dryer, right? And if I turn it off, you can hear it turn off. I'll turn it back on just for a sec just to show you how it changes everything. Okay, so now if I go and take a look at this, it says it, it is spooled. 
It says that it's running at, uh, let's see if I can focus. It says it's running at 8% duty. If you can read the 8%, sorry, the phone's just shitty at focusing on this stuff, but it says 8%, just take my word for it. And, um, yeah, uh, what else we got here? So if I go to induction, for example, you can see on the induction now, you can see that it's actually got a, a percentage, like a 7.41% duty, which is just sort of saying, you know, between, you know, nothing and full blast, you know, how much, how much airflow do we have? So that's just sort of telling you the, the duty cycle that we've got. And um, on the power supply side, you can see that the voltage has dropped a little bit from 27.2 to like 27.05, just because it's not really pulling all that much power. If I cranked it up, it would be dropping the voltage quite a bit, uh, quite a bit more. And uh, yeah, supercharger enable and 1750 now. So all I did was increase the, the signal from 1730 milliseconds to 1750 and that gives you the power that you're hearing right now which is just like a like a hair dryer kind of thing and if i put that up to 2000 it's going to like blow the tube off right because the car's not on so one of the big issues that i have is i don't know how much i can command this thing without burning out the controller because i don't think the controller can handle like more than 250 to 300 amps so if i just put it at 2000 even when the car's running i might like nuke the controller so i kind of have to creep up on it and see how close I can get to maximum without blowing this thing up. So I'll just turn off the supercharger because I don't want to drain the battery too much, but yeah. So this is pretty much uh, where we're at right now. Um, as you can see, pretty much most of the subsystems do work, um, but you know, again, I haven't done any road testing yet and I'm, I'm going to take my time and make absolutely sure that this thing is 100% going to work before I test it out because you really only get one shot at it uh, sometimes so this is just sort of like uh, you can call this like a 2b or you know video 4 or whatever uh, essentially just uh, proof of concept that everything works and that way if I blow the car up I mean at least uh, I have something to show for it right and and you can believe that that it was at least to the point where I got a hairdryer to turn on with the car off right so all right, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, make sure to leave your comments and, and support. And uh, the next video will definitely be, um, you know, the, the conclusion to the series with all the cool stuff working, and uh, you'll get to see how much, how much actual uh, uh, power this thing makes. Okay, have a great day. Bye.